What's going on YouTube? So in the world of luxury vehicles, segments and competition evolve very fast, which is why only three years after the introduction of this generation of Q7, Audi is putting it under the knife for a very extensive refresh. Now, as always, I'll remind you to stop by and see our friends at Audi of Lexington if you're in the market for any new or used Audi. So with all that said, let's go ahead and see how this new Q7 stacks up against the competition. So getting started here with the exterior design, Audi wanted to differentiate their SUVs. So all of their SUVs now have the, the new octagonal grille, which has these vertical chrome bars that run through here like that. Um, now, like the last year, you can also get a black optic package. It's nothing as extreme as what you see on the Q8, but it does black out this trim around it as well as this area below it. Now as far as your headlights, this is one important thing that Audi has updated for 2020 since you now have LED headlights as standard equipment whereas you previously used to get standard Xenon HIDs. And as you can see it does have the latest design. Um, here on the prestige level we have the matrix headlights which have the cool dynamic turn signal. Um, and you can also get optional laser headlights which have the cool animation that you've probably seen on some other Audi models. Now coming down here to your wheels, as you expect for a luxury vehicle, you do have a wide assortment of options. So standard on your premium and your premium plus are going to be 18 inch alloys, but you can option on a 20 inch alloy. And this standard on this prestige level is a 20 inch alloy. However, what we have here is one of the optional 21 inch alloys. And there are even some 22 inch options available if you want to have that largest wheel option. And coming up here to your mirrors, they do have standard heating as well as power folding. However, you will have to go up past the base trim if you want auto dimming as well as the integrated blind spot monitor. So walking around to the rear design of this refreshed Q7, this is not gonna see as many changes as the front did, but it still has quite a few thrown in there. So here in the, you know, this is the most noticeable change. It's got to be this chrome piece that goes all the way across the back and into the LED taillights. Now these taillights have also uh, seen a change for 2020. This is updated to their newest design language, and it does also have dynamic turn signals like the front. However, Audi has also uh, changed this rear area to delete uh, the real exhaust pipes on the pre-refresh model. Um, whether you think that's a pro or a con, um, let me know in the comments below, but they have changed that for 2020. Now if you're not a fan of this fake exhaust for 2020, uh, you can opt for the black optic package which will black this out completely so there's no fake exhaust and it will also black out this nice crumb trim uh, to give it a sporty look. Now Audi continues to have a pretty decent level of safety systems as standard equipment for 2020 since it has forward emergency braking with pedestrian detection and auto high beam headlights standard across all of the models. Now, if you want a lot of the advanced safety systems, that's gonna be included in the driver assistance package, uh, and that's standard on the Prestige model or optional on the Premium Plus, and that will include the lane keeping assist as well as adaptive cruise control with Audi Traffic Jam Assist. Well, guys, arguably the bigger change is on the inside, so now let's go ahead and get into that. First walking up to the 2020 Q7, uh, you will notice right off the bat we have the updated Audi key fob. Uh, this is the newest version which is a little bit thinner than the outgoing version. As far as getting inside the vehicle itself, of course all you have to do is just reach behind the handle and a sensor will unlock. Now this interior, this is where the big refresh changes come from. As you can see, this is a ground up redesign with absolutely nothing like the 2019 model. Now discussing your interior material and color options, uh, you will continue to find real leather seating standard on every Q7 with your choice of black, Saiga beige, Okapi brown, or a new metro gray color. And then when you opt for the luxury package, that's where you'll get upgraded to Valcona leather, which comes in those same four colors. Now, of course, as you would expect, there are a series of different wood trims available, including a special brown eucalyptus trim if you go for the luxury package. 
Now turning over here to your door trim, uh, this part looks decently similar to the outgoing model. Uh, you will find a soft touch plastic across the armrest for the most of the models, but it can be leather padded if you go for the luxury. Of course, all four of your windows are one touch automatic and you will find two person memory seating across the board. Now, as far as your seat, this is an eight way power adjusting seat with four way lumbar support which is standard on all the models except for that luxury package which throws in 18-way power adjusting seats with massaging ability. And then like I already mentioned, this is the standard real leather seating and it does have a nice stitching design. Now one of your benefits of choosing the Prestige is that you actually have soft closed doors, Now, like I was saying, looking around this cabin, it really is a night and day difference from the 2019 Q7, and the materials have also upgraded. So across your upper dash here, you do have a soft touch plastic. If you choose the luxury package, this will be a leather. And then dropping down here to your middle, like with the latest Audi models, you have a large piece of piano black trim, which blends into your displays. Below that, we have some of the high gloss wood. And then all through the middle here, we have some more piano black trim as well as some more of that wood. Now to start up the Q7, you do have push button start. Now, of course, what you are looking at here is Audi's signature virtual cockpit system. In the 2020 Q7, it's been upgraded to version 2.0, which has slightly different animations, a little bit snappier performance, and it is also now included even on the base premium model, which previously did without it. And of course, you do have the signature features like the Google Earth Maps. Now on the prestige trim level, you will also have a head-up display as well. And coming back to the steering wheel, of course it is electric power assisted and nicely leather wrapped. Um, it is power adjusting standard across all of the trim levels and heated if you choose the cold weather package. Additionally, you will find standard rain sensing wipers as well as standard paddle shifters. All right, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about storage. Now, of course, since the whole design has changed here, the storage configuration has changed and it's actually a little bit less than last year. So when we open up the center console here, um, it's not very deep. You do have a nice felt lining though and a wireless phone charger if you have the Premium Plus or the Prestige trim level. And you also have two USB ports. However, up in front of that, we only have a little cubby which used to be a lot larger. And then there used to be a little bit of storage up here in the front. That's now gone since we have the uh, same kind of tilted display here like in the Audi Q8. But nevertheless, as far as the shifter, we do have the standard electronic shifter. You can pull back for drive. You can bump to the right if you want to shift manually here or use those aforementioned paddle shifters. And then when we go into reverse, um, on the prestige level models, you will find a 360 degree camera system which has been vastly improved over last year. Uh, this has the newest setup where it does things like turn with the active trajectory. And then you can also go into a 3D mode and pan all around the vehicle. These are things that you could not do last year with the old 360 degree camera system. And then back behind the shifter, you do have an electronic parking brake. Alrighty, so jumping over that, the volume knob for the audio system has been relocated up here. Um, now, as so long as you choose anything but the very base model, you're going to have a 730 watt 17 speaker Bose sound system instead of the previous um, Bang & Olufsen sound system. So let's go ahead and take a sample of that. So 
sound quality of this system is certainly excellent as we've come to expect from Audi. Now moving on up here, we have a row of capacitive touch buttons. Uh, the one I'll point out here is for your drive mode select. As you can see, we have a ton of different drive modes, um, including off-road, all-road, comfort, individual, and you also have your buttons to adjust the air suspension that comes standard on Prestige. And that pretty much brings us here to our display, so I'll go ahead and talk about the sizes of these. This lower one here is an 8.6 inch display, and this top one is a 10.1 inch display both of which, I will add, are larger than the previous 8.3 inch display on the Q7. Kind of focusing in on the bottom one first here, it's mostly used for your climate controls. Now on this prestige level model, we have the four zone automatic climate. Uh, the other models do come standard with a three zone climate system. And as you can see, uh, you can just easily swipe up and down to adjust like so. And like in previous Audis with this system, it does have a kind of a force touch, so you have to kind of you can touch it and you have to press into it to make that selection. Additionally, heated seats are standard equipment on all Q7s and the Prestige is the only model to have standard ventilation. Pressing this button right here will bring you to your additional functions of the climate control including setting the rear climate. Now up above that we have another row of buttons including for your Homelink Universal Remotes as well as defeating your auto start stop system. And then we'll go ahead and move on up here to our main part of the infotainment system here for the new MMI touch response system. This is, uh, you know, been rolling out to the Audi lineup over the last couple years and it's brand new to this Q7. As you would expect, navigation is standard and you have the same awesome Google Earth maps just like in the virtual cockpit display. You also have some shortcut buttons along the side here. And you'll also see the um, smartphone interface where you can wirelessly use Apple CarPlay as well as Android Auto. Now I could talk about this system all day because there truly is a lot of functionality in it. But I'm going to opt to just refer you to our dedicated tech help video if you want to learn more about the system. A link to that is in the video description. Now moving on up here, we do have an auto dimming mirror with a built-in compass and it is the frameless design. And then one of our nice standard features across the entire Q7 lineup is a panoramic moonroof. As you can see, it does go back past the second row and the front portion does of course open up, though I'm not going to because it is very, very cold outside. All right, so that concludes all of the stuff to look at in the front part of the cabin. So now let's go ahead and see what changes Audi has thrown in in the rear seats. All right, so one of the best things about this Q7 has got to be this rear seat since it's just really, really comfortable and really luxurious back here. Um, Audi does throw in an absolute crap ton of features, especially here on this Prestige model. Now, all of them will have standard vents, as you would expect, uh, but down here we do have kind of the a new updated control center, which has a lot of your climate controls as well as your seat uh, controls. So we have four zone climate on this particular model that's included in the warm weather package. So that's standard on prestige or optional on the premium plus. Um, so each rear passenger back here can adjust their temperature. We also have three stage heated rear seats, which are included in the cold weather package. And new for 2020 is that the 12 volt outlet has been updated to uh, two smart charging USB ports. And you do also still have a 12 volt outlet. So everyone's gonna be charged up back here. Another thing I do wanna point out is we do have vents here on the B pillar, as well as a rear window sunshade, also standard on Prestige or optional on Premium Plus. Now, as far as the actual uh, space is concerned, we're gonna come in at 38.8 inches of both leg and headroom, uh, which does actually place it above the BMW X7, but it is a little bit less than the Mercedes GLS. Um, behind rear seating position, most certainly don't have any issues back here. I have probably, I would say at least, uh, nine to 10 inches of rear leg room since I do have knee cutouts and my feet can easily slide up underneath the seat. All right, and as far as how to get into the third row, Audi has made it relatively simple. It took me a while to figure it out, but once you do figure it out, it is pretty easy. So you just locate this little lever right here. You do that, 
and then you have to find this handle right here and push in kind of hard and then it does release and then it does also just kind of hydraulically fold up and out of the way which is a pretty nice setup now, looking at the third row itself, you are going to find uh, 29 inches of rear legroom and 36 inches of rear headroom, uh, which does place it behind a lot of its rivals like the X7 and GLS. Uh, but let's go ahead and get back there and see what it's like for an adult. <laughs> so, uh, first getting back here, you know, honestly, once you get settled in, it's really not too bad. Um, the seat, as you can see, doesn't have a lot of thigh support. It's pretty much sitting directly on the floor. Um, but as far as the actual leg room, it's not too bad. And you can also slide the seat forward if you need to. And my feet do have a space to slide up under the seat. As far as the amenities are concerned, it doesn't look like you have very many. You have a cup holder. I don't see any vents back here, uh, but you do have lighting. So overall, this is going to be a, quite a bit worse than like X7 and GLS, uh, but that is expected considering its price point. Now one of the nice features that the Audi Q7 throws in as standard equipment is a hands-free power tailgate. So just wave your foot under the bumper to open. And once it opens, you are going to find a good amount of space back here. So behind the third row seats, you're going to find 15 cubic feet of space. If you fold them, it expands to 38 cubic feet. And if you fold all of them, that goes to 72 cubic feet of space. Now, it is worth noting that's uh, quite a bit less than some of its rivals, like the XC90, GLS, and X7. Uh, however, for most of your uses, I think that you're going to be perfectly fine here with this Q7. And of course, this is an Audi after all, so it is finished nicely with this nice uh, metal uh, lip here. As well as off to the side, you do have controls for your air suspension to raise and lower it. And another nice feature that they throw in across the Q7 lineup is a power folding third row. So you can do that just here at a touch of a button. Now here at the passenger seat, you do have the same adjustments with the driver, and you would also have memory if you went for the luxury package. And in front of the passenger, we do have a, a good size glove box. It is dampened and nicely felt lined. And up top, we do have a sun visor with a light mirror, LED lighting. And this is also one of the unique features about the Q7. It actually has uh, two of them, so you can have it blocking the side as well as in the front. Uh, at the same time, which is actually quite nice, and very few cars have that. But anyway, that sums up the interior of this Q7. Uh, so now let's go ahead and take it out on the road and see the changes Audi has made to the powertrain. What we have with us here today is the TFSI 55. This is the most common powertrain configuration, um, and this is brand new for 2020. So basically, you have a new and nice and powerful yeah. engine, um, replaces the previous supercharged unit, and we now have a turbocharged 3 liter V6 engine. Um, this is a mild hybrid, so it's the same as in the Q8, so you have some uh, hybrid componentry, not really um, to help efficiency, but to help with kind of electronics, advanced auto start stop, stuff like that. Um, and power here is 335 horsepower, 369 pound-feet of torque. And as you can probably tell, it's pretty quick. <laughs> You know, like he was mentioning, this is the exact same powertrain that's on the Q8, you know, which in itself, I think is pretty impressive because it's coming down, you know, here to a, a cheaper priced vehicle. You know, this is relatively a mainstream uh, luxury offering. So, you know, this is actually a really good powertrain to be in this vehicle. So it's nice that Audi has updated it to have basically their flagship powertrain in this Q7. Um, but if you do not go for that uh, you know, the 3 liter 55 model, there is, you know, the base 45 setup, which is actually a four cylinder. That's a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, 248 horsepower, 
273 pound feet of torque. That's standard on premium and premium plus. I will point out that lower engine that's not available right now. Yeah. <laughs> wow. You know, I have to say, you know, one of the first things that you notice kind of, you know, getting into, you know, a German luxury vehicle is just how smooth it rides. You know, this particular tester is the Prestige, so we do get the air suspension. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's just exceptionally smooth in here. You know, we're, this is a very rough road. We just hit a, a big pothole in the road. And did you even feel anything? No, you didn't. Because this has really a quite phenomenal um, ride quality in this Q7. As far as the transmission, we have an 8-speed automatic transmission. Um, it does shift very well, just like in other Audi products. Really, all this stuff works together remarkably well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really quick for a big three-row crossover like this. Uh, really impressive. 060 uh, Audi has rated at 5.7 seconds. Feels every bit yeah. as fast, maybe even faster than that. Now, like I already vaguely mentioned, since this is the mild hybrid setup, you do have advanced auto start stop. And uh, actually, it is able to shut off as you come to a stop, which is what it had just done. Yeah. Turn the restart. Yeah. That was a really quick turnaround. A lot of times that that uh, shut off and turn back on immediately is uh, troublesome for uh, cars handled it like a charm and now that we're up to highway speed I will bring out our sound level sound level meter uh, to kind of get a reading going 50 55 miles an hour see how quiet this car is I know uh, it's very quiet in person so we'll see how the reading is do it oh it did okay okay it dropped down past it's 49 decibels wow that is by far the lowest reading that we've ever gotten on this sound level meter uh, normally uh, what they're looking at is around 55 or more decibels um, and this is as you can tell it's registering like 49 so that's six decibels lower which is really quite remarkable. I was interested in seeing if it would even show up on the sound level meter, but it really does because this is an extremely quiet uh, cabin in here. And of course there are a lot of different drive modes. Uh, we also have a dynamic. You'll notice these different drive modes do impact the air suspension, so we're lowering down right now uh, for this dynamic mode. From the start here, I can tell a substantial difference, um, especially in the steering setup. Really tightens down um, you know, by default, of course. Like as in the comfort mode, it is you know pretty loose, pretty lightweight, but really tightens the, everything down. And as we rounded that corner there, um, it also body roll is greatly reduced. Uh, really yeah. brings everything under control in a really really nice way. Now, um, I am going to lead into something that the Q7 doesn't do so hot in, and that would probably be the fuel economy. You know, this has pretty fantastic powertrain, but oddly enough, this hybrid, you know, does not really get a good fuel economy. Um, so, if you go for the uh, 55 model, which is what we have here, um, that's going to be rated at 17 city, 21 highway, 18 combined, um, which is... 3 mpg less than the 2019 version now that we have this new uh, powertrain setup and it's definitely uh, a lot worse than most of the rivals 3 to 4 mpg right. worse than that basically 
the 2019 was in line with the competition yeah. and we have moved backwards. So overall, the driving experience here in the 2020 Q7 is not radically different than the 2019, but that is a, a very much a good thing. This is always one of my favorite driving three-row luxury crossovers, and it does remain so today uh, because it just it really has a nice and athletic feel in addition to all of the extreme luxury experience. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and discuss the pricing for this refreshed Q7. Uh, you're going to continue to find very attractive pricing, especially if you compare it to its other German rivals. So for the very base premium, um, and this is with the 45, so the four cylinder, um, that's going to start at $54,800. The premium plus is $57,200. And then if you go for the prestige, that comes standard with the, the hybrid V6 powertrain, um, and that's going to be $71,200 as a starting price, um, which is worth knowing it's around a three dollars to $5,000 increase over 2019. Uh, but you are, keep in mind, you're getting a lot more equipment this year. Now we do have some options on top of that prestige. So we have the optional white paint for $595, as well as the 21 inch wheels for $1,000, the cold weather package for $750, um, and then we also have the towing package for $750, and then the destination charge for $995. Um, so all told, this one as equipped comes in at $75,290, um, which is definitely, you know, I have to say it's a, a very attractive price point, especially when you look at it relative to its competition, like the GLS and X7, way cheaper than those offerings. Um, and then as far as like, if you want to compare it to the MDX, you know, it is a little bit more expensive. So it's kind of the middle ground in between yeah, those two. bridges the gaps, but yeah. the gap between Japanese rivals <laughs> and yeah. the big German rivals. So it's, you know, occupies maybe a sweet spot for a lot of you guys. Well guys, we hope you enjoyed watching this in-depth look at the refreshed 2020 Audi Q7 Prestige. If you've made it this far, hopefully that means you enjoyed this video, so be sure to help us out by hitting that subscribe button down below, and we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.